Hello everyone. In the previous class, we discussed about how we can uh, design a different kind of logic gates based on the universal gate. And we also try to see like uh, uh, how the logic gates are different from the exclusive gates or the basic gates. Okay. Now suppose I have a function and I, if I want to implement that function uh, on the logic gates so that it is easily doable. But the important thing is suppose uh, in particular, if I want to implement any function, so uh, and I want to design in based on that logic gears, so it is quite difficult to remember the circuit structure for any particular logic. And also, like suppose I have a function, a long function, and if I have to simplify that function or what I want to find how the simplified version of that function will look like, so it is quite difficult to do that. So for that purpose, we need one uh, operation with the function and that operation we call it the boolean algebra so boolean algebra is uh, uh, really very important and it is a uh, one kind of division of mathematics that basically deal with the operations on logical values and that incorporates the binary informations or binary variables so uh, most common uh, boolean variables are uh, presented in the possible values like either in uh, logic 0 or in 1 okay so uh, basically the boolean algebra is different than the elementary algebra because elementary algebra deal with the uh, numerical operations whereas the boolean algebra deal with the logical operation okay so uh, so basically to simplify any function if I have a function, we definitely need some uh, Boolean law, Boolean theorem in the Boolean algebra that can help us to minimize the function so that the cost can be reduced or the number of logic gate requirement to implement the same logic uh, can be reduced. Okay? So Boolean algebra is the important thing that need to be considered and that we should know how it is working. So let us try to derive some of the Boolean algebra for basic gates basically like or gate uh, and gate xor gate and also for the inverter okay so let us discuss one by one suppose i am i just wanted to make some boolean algebra for the not gate so how it will look like let us try to see suppose i have a not gate okay and uh, uh, if i have a a complement of complement what is the output of this? Suppose I have uh, one input A and I have complemented it two times. Then what will be the output? A. It will be same like A. So somewhere if there is some Boolean algebra, which looks like there is a two, two, type, two times complement of any of the variable, then we can consider it as a normal. Okay. So this is the first thing which is needed for the uh, not gate. Now let's talk about the uh, others other gates as <coughs> suppose uh, i'm considering the or gate okay if i have a input a or in means simply i have to add these things like logical addition so a plus one what is the output of a plus one one is the logical one right so what will be the output of this one can anyone comment one, one. always one because see whatever the a is there it does not matter because we are adding so 0 plus 1 will also give you 1 and 1 plus 0 uh, uh, 1 plus 1 will also give logic 1 okay so if i have the expression something like a plus 1 so i can replace it with the 1 directly without any variable i can replace it like this similarly if i have a plus 0 what will be the output <laughs> this will be a yeah it does not depend on the zeros now it will depend on a Okay, suppose I have variable like a bar plus one, what will be the output? One. one, perfect. And what about a bar plus zero? A bar. A bar, perfect. It depends on the a bar. Suppose I have a plus a, then what will be the output? A. Perfect. A plus a will give you the a. Okay. Similarly, if I have the A complement plus A complement, then what will it will give? A complement. A complement. A complement. Perfect. Suppose I have one variable A plus 
a complement, something like this. What will be the output in this case? One. 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 Okay. Because these both the variables are uh, opposite to each other, right? So if zero a is equal to zero, so a bar will be one. So zero plus one that will give you one, and vice versa. Okay. So a plus a bar will always give you the logic one. So these are some of the uh, algebra that we should know about the OR gate. Let us try to consider the same thing for the AND gate. Okay. Uh, suppose I have a a dot one. What will be the output? <laughs> that depends on a only because if a is equal to zero. Then A will not play a major role, right? So A will reflect the output. So that will be A. Similarly, A dot zero. What is the output? Zero. Always zero. A bar dot one. That will be A bar. A bar perfect. And A bar dot zero. That will be zero. Zero perfect. A bar dot zero zero. Then I have to write a dot a. A dot a means a. a. A perfect. What about a bar dot a bar? A bar. A bar perfect. And what about a dot a bar? Zero. 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 So uh, this is how we can. Develop the Boolean algebra. So this kind of formula or this kind of concept will be needed if, especially if I have a long expression for any function, and if I want to minimize the function, in that case, this kind of formula will be applied. Suppose I have a function which is which looks like a plus one. Okay, so instead of providing any logic gate, if direct, so that gives you like one. Okay, so instead of any of the logic, I can directly connect the output with the one or the uh, logic high. So we don't need any of the logical circuit, okay? So this is the importance of the Boolean algebra that can that can be utilized to optimize the number of gates to implement any of the function, okay? How to optimize that one? I will tell you in detail later on. Suppose I have an XOR kind of thing. So let us try to check uh, this for the XOR as well, okay? So suppose I have uh, a yeah, let me change the color. It is more bright. A one. What is the output? Can anyone comment? Yeah. Before that, I need to write the expression for that one so that you will be. It will be easy, easy for you. Like x. Uh, sorry. A and B are the two input. So zero 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 one one zero one one. So zero one one zero. This is the uh, expression. Okay. So now just please tell me what is the a xoring one? A xor one. What will be the output? A bar. A, a bar. Perfect. Perfect. A complement. Similarly, suppose if I want to make a xoring with the zero, what will be the output? A. That will be a. Absolutely a. Just just you have to validate it from here. Like. Uh, just you need to check you need to fix one of the variable this one like i have fixed this one now i need to check if b is zero then i am getting x is equal to zero and b is equal to one then i am getting this one so that is why how it will look like uh, this one okay similarly suppose let us consider the all other cases uh a bar x soaring of one what will be the output just tell me a bar x soaring of zero and a bar xoring of a bar a bar xoring of uh, a and b uh, similarly a bar and a xoring of a bar yeah please tell me for all the algebras what will be about this a bar xoring one a a that, that will be a what about a bar x soaring zero? A bar. A bar. A bar. Okay. What about this one? A x or a? Zero. Zero. Because yeah, we are we are getting the same. If both the inputs are same, then I need uh, I will get zero. A bar, yeah, here I will get again a bar x or b bar that I will get zero. What about this one? If both are different, Nine. then I will Nine. get one. So this is all about how we can design the well, similarly, you can do it for the NOR gate. Similarly, you can do it for the NAND gate. Similarly, X NOR gate. So this is uh, easy and uh, you need 
why I am uh, putting too much stress on uh, this thing? Because uh, I just told you, if I have to minimize the function, minimize the variables, in that case, this Boolean algebra is really important. Uh, because uh, if you see, if I have some uh, Boolean algebra, then it is giving some different kind of output. Okay. Uh, so that can be utilized to minimize the functions. Okay. Even though it will perform the same logic, whatever it was before, but after after utilizing this Boolean algebra, the same the function will be same, but the variables will be less. Okay, so you can optimize the number of gates. So this is what about the Boolean algebra is. Now let us talk about if I have to utilize all these things. So there are some law and the theorem that is associated with the Booleans. Okay, so there are some Booleans law and the theorems, and these laws are like this. Okay, Boolean laws and theorem. The first law is law of intersection. Okay, so law of intersection is like a dot one is zero and a dot zero is zero. So this is what we call it the law of intersection. Okay, yeah, some of the things will be same as whatever we just discussed before. Okay, so a dot one or a dot zero, that is what you call it the law of intersection. Law of yeah, this is not important to remember this thing, right? So uh, just I am just telling you how we can uh, make a group of the Boolean uh, uh, law what we discussed before, right? So the law of union is like a plus one and a plus zero. Then we can call it the uh, yeah. What is the output that you know? Just we discussed all these things before, so I think I don't need to put too much of his stress like how it is coming. A plus one is always one. A plus zero is always a. So this is what we discussed already, right? Law of identity, we can say, like if we try to multiply our eight with one, so we are getting the same kind of like the a is getting reflected and uh, one is getting reflected. So we can call it the law of identity. Law of null, like if I'm I'm doing some operation with the zero, then we can call it the law of null. So a dot zero and a plus zero, that can be considered as a law of null. <coughs> law of uh, item totems like means like uh, if the same kind of variable is utilized for the operation like a dot a or a plus a so this is law for tautology similarly law of complement uh, or law of uh, negation is like if we are utilizing the opposite kind of logic for the operation like a dot a bar and a plus a bar then we can call it the law of complement okay similarly uh, if i'm talking about the law of uh, Involution or of uh, negation, like a complement of complement that we have already discussed this thing that you will uh, you will get the a just like uh, what we discussed before. Similarly, law of commutation is like a plus b is same as the because we are talking about a logical one. Okay, so it does not means like if I am writing a plus b or b plus a, these both are different. No, so the law of commutation it it follows the law of commut uh, uh, commutation. Like a plus b is same as a b plus a. Similarly, a dot b is same as the b dot a. Okay, so we can replace each other. So this is all about some other laws are uh, are also there. Uh, one law is la like law of association. Uh, so is it fast or should I move ahead? Is there any doubt in this slide? I just uh, quickly uh, discuss all these things because all these things is uh, very known to you, right? So there is no need to put too much of a stress on this. Yeah, so uh, here we have, let us suppose some other laws uh, law are also there, like law of association. Uh, law of association is like a plus b, a dot b dot c is same like a dot b dot c in bracket, something like that. So this is the law of uh, association. Similarly, you can do it for the uh, ending operation. So a plus b ending c is equal to a ending b plus c, something like that. Law of distribution. So these all are the laws, some, some, something that I need to discuss here. Uh, law of observation is very important, especially because all other things are very normal that you can do it easily. But law of observation is really very important that we need to discuss. Okay, what is that law of observation or law of redundancy? Here, if you see, uh, a dot a plus b, that is giving a. Yeah, this is very funny. Like one variable is removed here, so uh, now just after this, we don't need this variable. So I will I will prove some of the variable. How we are getting like these kind of things so uh, you can you can prove it like simply here like a dot a plus a dot b that i will if i will expand this one so i will get a dot a plus a dot b 
that and and a dot a is nothing but this is what i will get a plus a dot b okay and now what i can make it the common a uh, one plus b okay and if i can make something like this one plus b is always one okay so then i will get a okay so this is how we can prove this one how the a dot a plus b is equal to a so this is how we can prove okay and similarly you can so this is really very important to understand the boolean's law because uh, i just told you the objective of boolean law is to minimize the function here if you see on the left hand side we had two variables variable a and the variable b but after simplifying i am getting only one variable so there is no meaning of this one and that will reduce the cost reduce the size or reduce the number of logic gates here i need one uh, end gate for uh, one or gate for this one and one end gate after the result okay but here i need two gates at least but here if you see i don't need any gate so zero gates are needed if i will simplify it so this is the advantage okay so this is what we can do it any doubt on this do do anyone has any doubt on this how i explained this one so this is really very important like this law is really very important law of the of, law of observation is very important that is basically observe some of the variables similarly you can also prove for this one a plus a b that is equal to a so simply yeah this is nothing but what i got here a plus a b okay so that is what i will get similarly you can also prove for uh, a plus b plus b bar that is equal to a plus b bar a plus b bar plus b that is giving like a plus b okay so here if you see uh, yeah you can you can explain it anyway you can you can prove it like this okay, this is true okay how you can prove it let me uh, give you some hint on that uh, i'm just giving hint for in, uh, one thing and then you can use it for the others suppose i have this one a plus b bar and i want to make it like a plus b bar how we can do that if you see here on the first uh term we have both the variables okay and on the second term i have only one variable okay so how i can do that if i can somehow add the another variable on that so how it can be done a plus b plus b bar into one is there any problem with this one there is no problem right if i'm multiplying any other variable with one it will give the same now if somehow i can replace this a uh, this one with this let us assume a b plus b bar uh, a plus a bar something like that this is also doable that so just after adding all these things you will get to know like some of the variable can can be eliminated and that could be done so this these are some of the process like see to simplify any of the variable you need to utilize all the boolean's law which we have discussed here okay so these kind of things can be utilized so this law we call it the law of observation so this is the homework to prove this one this one so th this is all about the uh, law of observation so homework uh, for you to prove this two okay this is the homework now let us talk about a de morgan theorem yes uh, in detail we will talk about this de morgan theorem so i am just uh, for now i am just telling you like uh, uh, if i have uh, uh, the complement of sum is same as the product of complement let me repeat it again what i what i am saying de morgan's first theorem says that the complement of sum is same as the product of complement similarly if you talk about a de morgan yeah i will talk about this thing in more detail okay and where we, yeah this these two law are also very important de morgan's law are also very important especially while simplifying the things yeah? when i want to simplify some of the variable then this is really very important okay so the second simply like uh, the the, the complement of product is same as the sum of the complement so this is what the de morgan's second theorem said so i will discuss in more detail similarly some other laws uh, some theorems are also there a b plus a bar c plus b c that we can replace it with the a b plus a bar c that we can prove it just like this what we did here and similarly for just like this one okay so all the logics will be utilized yeah some of the things i will prove but uh, 
uh, you have to do by your own self like you have to prove all these variables the similar thing can be applied for the this kind of pos and uh, like a plus b a bar plus c something like that and you will get a plus b into a bar plus c uh, transposition theorem is also there a, a b plus a bar c that can be replaced with the help of a plus c and a bar plus c uh, i will uh, discuss about these laws later on and how we can utilize some of the theorems to come up with like this so some of the duality theorem is utilized uh de morgan's theorem will be utilized so i will tell you what is the duality theorem how we can utilize to simplify these things so please wait for some time and i will tell you how to solve these three expressions okay so these are some of the law that need to be considered or that that we should know to to simplify any of the boolean function okay now let us talk about uh, let us try to prove some of them let us take some example okay so so that you will be able to understand okay what is the importance of uh, this boolean law and the minimization technique okay let us consider the example suppose i have one uh, uh, function which is like x y plus x y complement okay let us assume i have function something like this okay now if you see if i have a function like this and i want to implement this function then how many logic gates we need can anyone tell me how many logic gates we need if i have to implement this function how many logic gates are needed Four. Four. How? Uh, first, we have to uh, end x y. Yes. And then we have to add it to another x y with a complement. Okay. So, like you are saying, one x y, then uh, you, you need one inverter for that, and then you have to add it, right? Yes, sir. we can use three also. Three. Yeah. So I am just talking about the optimum one. Yeah. in detail you can use like 4 is also fine but you can also use 3 you can use one um, uh, end gate one nand gate then one or gate right so if we try to see if we try to implement this logic uh, the logic circuit will look like this one so you will have one x and y okay that will give you the xy second you need one uh, nand gate okay uh, this is also connected with the xy only so let me connect it like this oh sorry okay so, so this is how we got it now i need one uh, or gate to simplify this one so this or gate is needed and then you will get the function so total three gates are minimum three gates are needed to implement if i have the function something like this now let us try to apply some of the things like here i will get x y complement okay now let us try to solve this one okay suppose uh, i just told you de morgan's law de morgan's law i just told you x y complement is nothing but x uh, x complement plus y complement this is what we discussed in the previous slide right this was the de morgan's law okay yeah let me go back to that one yeah this was the de morgan's law if i have a plus b complement then i can use it like a complement plus b complement similarly if i have a plus b complement then i can use it like a complement dot b complement so this is what the de morgan's law is okay so if somehow i can apply the de morgan's law here on this term so i can make this the indi uh, like independent variable why i am applying de morgan's law why i am not applying other law this is only because the de morgan's law is the one of <coughs> <coughs> one of the tool at which i can separate each of the variable here both the variables are like i have to find x and y then i have to make the complement so they are dependent to make them independent variable i need to apply some de morgan's law so x complement plus y complement i will get here okay 
So if I simplify after applying the De Morgan's law, so the expression will be like x y plus x complement plus y complement. So this is what the expression after applying. Okay, after De Morgan's law, we will get the expression something like that. Okay, now if we try to make some group, you, you can use some other law. So here I have x, y plus let us try to make the y complement. Can, can you make it like a, b plus b complement? There was some law, something like this. So ob observe, uh, like a, b plus b complement, like law of uh, absorption. And it was like a plus b bar. So a b plus b bar will give you the a plus b bar. So similarly, what we can do, if I have the x y plus y bar, so I can make it like x plus y bar. Okay, so this will be the same. So, so uh, this is what the variable we have, sorry, x y plus x bar I have. Yeah, similarly, you can do it for uh, x y plus x bar. It's not a problem. So if you apply this one law of observation on this one, uh, absorption so you will get like x plus y bar okay you will get x plus y bar and then you have some x bar over here so after applying law of absorption okay law of absorption now you got like x plus y bar plus x bar is 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 with us like right? okay so if you see one more law here in the previous slide here i have a, uh, like yeah i think i missed something right you think i missed no uh, all the variables are clear yeah Sorry. so this yeah everything is fine right okay we can also apply some of the law like x y plus y bar is there so uh, with the help of this one either you can use some other other law as well like see here we have some x y plus y bar okay and then if you go back here x y plus y bar that you can see here a plus b c how it looks like because why why i am doing like this i want to balance all the variable with all uh, see here if i have a so in this term i have only a if you see here here i have a two terms so suppose let us consider a is x and b is the x bar and c is the y something like that so i can make this in terms of uh, like this variable where i will get x and y component in both the terms so this is the objective to consider the law of distribution kind of thing why i am considering law of distribution to make or to consider or to include all the variables which we have uh, in, the, in, in, in the function so that you can simplify it later on that will make you more easy okay so let us try to apply these things this law of distribution okay so see law of every law you must know and that you should know where i have to apply okay so uh, suppose i have something like this x y plus uh, y bar so if I apply the law of observation, yeah, this is also done. And uh, uh, if you see here, how many logic gates we need? We need one. Uh, yeah, A will directly be connected. Yeah, I need one inverter, one inverter for this one, and one OR gate. Again, I need three, uh, three, three gates. Okay. So in that case, I need two inverter and one OR gate. Okay, two inverter and one OR gate is needed. In this case, I, 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 I need one AND gate, one NAND gate, and one OR gate. Okay, so the number of gates are not reduced, it's still not reduced. So I need to apply some other law. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, please. You can simplify more. Yeah, yeah this, logic is, this logic is coming out to be one. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. so I'm just again telling you, right? So just please wait. Uh, so what we can do, if you see here, X plus X bar, okay? x plus x bar that will always give a logic one okay so x plus x bar is nothing but here that will give like x plus x bar i just that is i am saying one by one so that you should know uh, what are the different uh, things that we can consider 
Okay, so x plus x bar plus y bar, and x plus x bar is nothing but this is one. Okay, so that that will give one plus y bar, and again one plus y bar that will give you the one. So, what you got from this? You had a function that required three gates to implement this one, but if you simplify this one, you don't need any of the logic gates. Directly logic high can be considered to 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 uh, that can act as a f. Okay, so this is the importance of minimization. Okay, so now you got the points. Do you have any doubt on this? Anyone? If you have any doubt, you can ask the questions. So how we implement this one? This this is simply just pass the logic high. Wherever I I have to use this function, simply logic high will be passed. Okay, VDD will be connected. Okay. Okay, sir. So this is how uh, the the function can be minimized and uh, uh, to get the minimum number of logic gates. Okay. So you got the idea. What is the importance of this De Morgan's law? So the assignment is like whatever the law we just discussed in the previous two slides. Uh, try to prove all the law and the theorem at home. in case of any law uh, you are facing any uh, problem in any of the law please let me know and i will uh, we will consider it in the tutorial lecture okay so it is not possible to derive all the law right you can do it at at home okay? so this is how we can simplify it so here no logic gate required okay so this is all about the uh minimization now let us talk i, I just told you like uh, de morgan like de morgan's theorem is really very important <coughs> so why we are demorganizing and what is the process to do that yeah so we you we utilize the de morgan theorem before just like i just told you before like suppose i have any variable which is something like this a plus b complement and if you see here both the variables are now dependent because uh, the complement is for the results whatever we are getting after a plus b okay so to make each variable independent i have to apply some of the law and that law is the de morgan's law i just told you before so if you apply one of the de morgan's law you will get a bar dot b bar now a and b both are separated so they are not dependent like uh, if i have a bar and i have b bar so just simply by multiplying these two things i will get this function okay so see here uh, also one of the reason behind this one if i have to implement this logic in that case suppose i have a i have a b okay so first i need to uh, end this and then i have to invert this okay logically if i expand it so this this is what the requirement is if you see here no ah, sorry end not r r we need r it here Okay, A or B is needed. Okay, now if you talk about this one, if I have a A complement and the B complement, so A complement, B complement uh, inputs are there. Simply by ending, you can get the same thing. Okay, so this is what we because uh, we always expect that we have available both the logics like A and the A complement both are available with us. okay to design any of the circuit so by considering these things we can uh, see like this so let us try to discuss the demorganization in more detail how we can demorganize and what is the process to like see if i have only two variable just i just told you if i have a plus b complement for for that we can simply use like formula whatever we have a dot <coughs> but dot b bar but suppose i have a function something like this a plus b into c uh plus uh b bar c bar and whole complement if i have a function something like this and if i have to minimize this function after applying de morgan uh, de morgan theorem so we need to follow certain regulations how we can do that okay definitely we have to apply all these rules but what is the process how we can do that so let us try to see what are the process to de morganize the function okay so the first step uh, is the identify the variables whatever the variables you have in the in the function 
that you have to see how many uh, variables we have. Suppose let us take the example and then uh, with the help of example, we can solve these things. Suppose I have uh, uh, some, some something like A plus B plus C complement. Okay, suppose I have, I have something like this. Now, the first step is to identify the variables. Here we have three variables, variable A, variable B, and the C. We have three variables. Now, the second step is to find the dual of this expression. What is the dual of this expression? Dual of the expression means, now I will, I will discuss in more detail what is the duality, but for now, I'm just discussing what is the dual. Uh, so that you can get feel of it, but later on we will see. Okay, uh, let me discuss what is the duality. Okay, duality in the logic circuits. Okay, suppose I have a logic where I am doing ending. Okay, so if I have a uh, if I am doing ending end operation, yeah, let me make the box. And try to understand the things. Let us assume I have an end operation. I am doing the end operation. So duality theorem says that if you have some end operation in the function, so you have to replace it with the or operation and vice versa. So this is the first thing what the duality theorem says. I will discuss in more detail later on. Second uh, law about the duality is if, yeah, simply like uh, end means you're doing some dot product, right? So that dot product will be replaced, dot, dot will be uh, replaced with the plus sign. And if you have some logic one, then that can be replaced with the zero and so, and zero will be replaced with the one. So this is the sum of the law that need to be considered especially if I want to make the duality. So the first step to demognize was, I will, I will utilize these things later on. Okay, I will explain each and everything, don't worry. Suppose uh, I have a, a function. So the first step is to identify the variables. The second step is to find a dual of this expression. How to find a dual? I just told you now, okay? Third step is like complement each of the term, whatever the term you got that you have to complement it. Okay, so you have to complement each of the terms, whatever you have. Okay, and the, the fourth expression is the complement, the uh, four, fourth regulation is a complement the expression, whatever the final expression you have, then you ha that you have to complement it. Okay, and the fifth one is repeat the above step for all the mini min terms in the max term. What this min term in the max term is, please wait. I will tell you about this min term and the max term. Min term and max term is nothing but group of variables. Like suppose, uh, later on I will discuss in more detail about this min term and max term term. What is the meaning of this one? But for now, let me explain you what is the min term and max term. Suppose I have a function which is like AC plus uh, BC. Suppose AC plus BC, I have function, okay? So here I have uh, seen one, and two. So these two are the min terms. Okay. So these two are the min terms, the terms which are in the product form that we consider it as a min term. Okay. Later on, I will tell you what is the difference between these two things. Okay. Similarly, if you have a function, something like this, a plus C into B plus C. So these terms, we call them the max term. Okay, so the product term, we call them the min term and the, the sum term, we call them the max term. In detail, we will see later on, okay, don't worry. So these all are the steps that we need to follow to demorganize the function. Let us consider one example, okay. So suppose I have a function, something let us assume, yeah, I, I have already considered this function, f is equal to, a plus B plus C complement, okay? If I have a function, something like this. So let us start with one by one. Identify the variables. We have three variables here, A, B, and C. Find the dual of expression, okay? Find the dual of expression, how we can uh, uh, do that? Uh, simply just 
uh, whatever the expression here, because uh, all the uh, here I have a single uh, max term. Okay, so this second uh, term will not be applicable. Suppose I have expression something like this: a plus b plus c complement pl uh, into something like uh, uh, b plus d plus e complement, something like that. Then this uh, uh, dual of expression is required because I have to do make the dual of all the things here. But if I have a single max term or single min term, so this will not be required. Okay, later on we can see, we can we can check it out how we can utilize this one. So as of now, we have only one max term. So the dual of the expression is not needed. So this is the simple function. Now complement each term. We here we have a three terms a, b, and c. And if I try to complement it, that will be like a bar plus b bar plus c bar and this one. This is the complement of uh, C bar will also be there. A bar plus B bar plus C bar. Okay. Next one is complement the expression. Whatever the expression you have that you have to complement it. So A bar plus B bar plus, ah, sorry, sorry. I, I made one mistake here. Uh, uh, I have to convert end into R and R into end, right? So I need to put dot here. Okay. I made a mistake. A bar dot B bar dot C bar complement and then one more complement here. Okay. So this is what we can do that. Now let us try to see here. If you see complement and complement, this will be cancelled out and in result <coughs> I will get the expression A bar dot B bar dot C bar and this is the function after demarbonization. Let me repeat it again what we have done. The first thing is you have to identify the variables. Here we have three variables. Second thing is find dual of expression. Uh, uh, because we have only one max term uh, here, so we can apply this duality only inside this one. Okay, Not we can uh, replace this uh, dot with the plus and plus with the dot. So this is not we are doing like this, if I have something like this, so here I have a plus b dot b plus c. So in that case, I have to do something like that. But because we have only one max term here, so I don't need to consider all these things. Okay. So this is what we have considered here. Uh, we have applied the uh, duality only once in inside that uh, bracket. The third is complement each term. We have three terms, a, b, and c. So we need to complement. Initially, it was A, B, and C. So I need to make it A bar, B bar, plus C bar. Suppose I have an expression something like A bar plus B plus C bar and whole complement. In that case, uh, after applying all this law, the expression will be like A complement, complement dot B complement dot C complement and complement, something like that. Okay. And A complement, complement, that will become A. So this is what we have to do. So what we did here, we just complement each of the terms. Then the next uh, step is to complement the expression. Yeah, so whatever the expression we had, we had this expression. So we need to make the complement out of it. So both the complement will be cancelled out. Okay, so this is cancelling because we have we already had one complement uh, from the beginning. But there could be something like there is some function a bar plus b plus c complement. So here we cannot get like uh, uh, the complete complement on a single uh, on all the variables. So in that case, the the it is not getting cancelled. The expression will be something different. Okay, so because here, see, uh, the initially we had a complete complement. That is why it is getting cancelled. Otherwise, uh, if the expression is something like this, uh, it will not become cancelled immediately. Okay, so we need to apply some other law. So here, uh, after uh, considering the fourth law, that will be like a bar dot b bar dot c bar and bar complement and complement. This will be cancelled out, and at the end we will get a bar plus uh, a bar dot b bar dot c bar. And this is nothing but this is the after demorganize the function, we will get the expression something like this. Okay. So this is how the demorganization works. Do you have any doubt, anyone, except this min term and max term? Mixed term and mixed term, I will tell you in more detail later on. 
how we decided this is the mean term how we decide this is the max term and what is the objective of this mean term and max term i will tell you just after this i will tell you do you have any doubt on this uh, demorganization if you have you can ask the questions otherwise we can move ahead with the mean term and the max term kind of thing okay so if we see here like one more thing before we move ahead we should understand one more thing if you see the first case here so this was the first case and this is the second case <coughs> in the first case which i am considering this is the mean term what does it means it means that we are adding the product so we are doing sum of product okay so we what we are doing we are adding the product terms so we can also call them sum of the product term similarly if you see here in the second case what we are doing we are making the product of the sum so we can call them pos expression product of sum expression okay so let us discuss sop and the pos in more detail why i am calling it sop and pos this is only because because we are in the first uh, expression we are uh, adding the product terms and in the second expression we are uh, multiplying the sum terms okay so this is what is needed 